You were for that cowboy dude. Yeah, the cowboy dude who was ready to pay your family a pretty penny for this company. Until he found out you were flirting with Bradburn Energy behind his back. Of course, I assume that's some kind of mistake. Bradburn's been scaling back on their output for the last decade, so there's no way in hell they could come anywhere near our purchase price. Maybe we could talk about this later. Right now, I'm on a hot streak. <laughs> That right there was a sneak peek of Netflix series a Partner Track starring Bay Area native Rich Ting. And he actually joins us now live in studio to chat all about it. Thanks so much, Rich, for joining us on Live in the Bay. Thanks for having me. So uh, word on the street is you actually, you know, being a Bay Area native, you have a little bit of history with Cron 4. A little bit. A little um, bit? <laughs> long time ago, back in the day when I was in college, I was able to come back uh -huh. uh, when you guys were at another location and I actually intern as a PA for Mr. Gary Radnich, uh -huh. um, along with Dave Gingona and that original crew back then. So it's really cool to come full circle and to be sitting here with you today in the new Cron studio. Yeah, well, you know, I'm just saying if you're uh, looking to come back to Cron 4, we are looking for an intern here at Live in the Bay. So I'm you know. down. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> uh, and, you, and, you know, shout out to your friends and family, right? Here Definitely. at home, being from the Bay Area. You still have family out here? I have family. Actually, shout out to my mom. It's her birthday today. Oh, so happy, happy birthday, birthday, mom. And shout out to my alma mater. Archbishop Reardon High School. It's our homecoming this weekend. So, uh, Coach Adir, go Crusaders. I uh, wish you guys all the best and bring home a victory for us. <laughs> love that, love that. Well, I'm sure that they're cheering for you. Let's get into your career a little bit. How did you first get your start as an actor? I actually came back to Los Angeles uh, to pursue a law firm job. Actually, mm -hmm. I went to law school, I got my JD, my MBA, and really? was being wow. very stubborn to not kind of give in and surrender to my passion, which was acting. Mm -hmm. um, ironically, long story short, I was given an opportunity to do a Warner Brothers gig, uh, kind of came to that intersection, took it, and the rest is history, so. The rest is history. The momentum's been going since then, and, and I couldn't be more grateful for the whole journey. That's so amazing. Do you do you ever have second thoughts about being a lawyer again, or you know maybe in the future? I mean, we're talking about partner track today, right? Yeah. Ironically, my character is a lawyer uh -huh. who doesn't practice law, so <laughs> I don't know how much acting I'm really doing because it's pretty much on paper we're pretty identical. So. Yeah. Well, speaking of partner track, what can fans expect from this new Netflix series? Well, number one, shout out to our whole you know production team. Our, our you know it's based on a book written by Helen Wu, uh, our showrunner Georgia Lee, um, our star Arden. Show, you know, and it's about a, a Korean American woman, a woman of color who's working her way up the partner track at a very prestigious New York Manhattan law firm. Uh, so, you know, obvious it's about women of color in a male dominated workplace. Mm -hmm. uh, I've obviously seen the entire season, so I can't give any spoilers away, but you know, the one thing that I really love about this show. Uh, not only is it about Asian American representation, obviously, but it's also very empowering to the female community. Mm -hmm. um, another really cool lesson, which I think is relatable to everyone, is that it kind of focuses on what society and what our culture forces us to do. What they kind of indoctrinate us at a very young age of what you should be doing or what you need to do, as opposed to what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, AKA your passion, your love. Yeah. And so again, not to throw any spoilers out there, but you know, every character within this, within this show and this first season, we really get into their work life, their personal life, their relationships, their love life. And everyone seems to kind of find that love and passion and take that scary leap towards it and away yeah. from like, you know, that, sti that stable nine to five and that financial stability, so to speak. So, man, you're you're really you're hyping it up right now. I can't wait I'm to trying see to keep your the suspense. Key, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to. I have to. You know, I have to hold yeah. it. You know, until to actually premieres Friday tomorrow. <laughs> so, uh, everyone, check it out. Um, until then. I can't really reveal too much more. Well, for you, Rich, I know that I'm sure you approach each role as being super important, but why was this role special to you, knowing that this series had Asian American representation? It, it, exactly because of that. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously I've been a fan of Arden, mm -hmm. and um, when, I, when I saw that she booked the lead and that there was an opportunity for two other Asian American characters to come on, I definitely wanted to fill one of those spots. And, you know, as uh, I've been blessed in this industry, it worked out, you know, in our favor and my, in my team and myself's favor. And, um, you know, I think it's just important because we've come from such a, a long past of mm -hmm. misrepresentation. Uh, I remember when I first got into the business, there was only so many roles that Asian men could audition for, mm -hmm. you know, and now with the inclusion of us, you know, we, we're be, we're finally being able to show the world how many aspects we have. We're not just one stereotype. We're not just one dimension, yeah, right? So of course. with 
partner track, uh, the family, the, the character I play, Carter Min, he's the eldest, of, he's the eldest Chinese American son of a billionaire Chinese uh, empire company called Min Enterprises. And it's really cool because like I mentioned earlier, Carter and myself on paper are very similar. Um, we're the eldest son mm -hmm. of our families. Uh, we both went to an Ivy League school. I have to uh, succumb and push down my pride as Carter went to Dartmouth, um, which <laughs> is okay. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm a true Yale Bulldog at heart, obviously. And we're both lawyers that went to law school but don't practice law. Mm -hmm. And so right there, you know, it shows an aspect of an Asian American male who maybe traditionally did all these things his parents wanted to. Mm -hmm. Med school, law school, whatever you have it. But now he's searching for his own identity as well. Wow. You know, yeah. he's forced as the eldest to kind of take over his dad's company, which ironically happens to, I think, a lot of the eldest kids and families these days. You know, they have that family responsibility, so to speak. But especially in the Asian community, I think that's more common. Mm -hmm. So. I, I love how they wrote it because it shows the frustration he has, you know? Yeah. On paper, it looks great. But in reality, if you ask Carter how does he feel, I don't think he'd be that positive on what he's doing right now. Mm -hmm. So again, like I mentioned earlier, everyone is searching for that identity, for that passion, you know? Yeah, well... He was supposed to do this, but what does he really want to do? Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to catching it tomorrow. So thank you so much, Rich, for joining us here on Live in the Bay. That's I appreciate amazing. you having me. To connect with Rich, we'll have a link on our website at liveinthebay.tv. We'll be right back.